Well, good morning. It's good to see you all. Uh, I'm not going to teach you how to be a successful dropout. Just don't follow the rules. It'll happen on its own, right? Uh, but I'm going to bring you a lesson from a, a dropout, which is me. Surprise. So if you'd please open your Bibles to Colossians chapter 3, that's where we'll be at today. Colossians chapter 3. So separate from our worship to our Lord and Savior this morning, uh, we are honoring our high school seniors of 2022. This is a time to congratulate them on their hard work. Not everyone has achieved this accomplishment. And those of you that have your family, as well as your church family, wants to honor you and send you off properly into your new life. That being said, we can next slide, please. This is really only the beginning of your life. The average lifespan in America is 79 years. That means you, at 18, have 61 years left to live the rest of your life, statistically. Right now, a very common question asked of you all is, what are you going to do with your life? Or, or what's your plan? But I'd like to present a different question this morning, and that is, how are you going to choose to live your life. You see, in a few months, you are going out into the world as adults for the first time. Whether you're starting to train for your career or you are beginning your career, the time of leaning on your parents is past, and in a very real sense, you're going to have to lean on yourself, so to speak. Not that your family won't be there for help and support throughout your life, but they're not gonna be there all the time now to stop you from making bad decisions nor will they be there to lead you into the good ones all the time. From here on out, your life is going to be made of choices that you yourself must make. The choices you will make will be both good and bad, and they will impact your life. Although I'm 15 years removed from high school graduation, which is how old a lot of the kids in the youth group are, it makes me feel old, all right? My choices still have an impact on who I am and the quality of life that I have. Believe it or not, some of the decisions that I made the year that I graduated, they still affect my life today. So again, I'd like to ask you, how are you going to choose to live your life now that you are gonna be on your own? Now, as I've only been the youth minister here for roughly three months now, I haven't really gotten the chance to know you who are graduating. We know of each other. We don't really know each other though. But I do care about what happens to you as my fellow Christian. And that's why I prepared this lesson to you from the book of Colossians. This letter was written by Paul to the Colossians and Laodiceans. These churches, uh, these churches were full of young and newly baptized believers who Paul loved even though he didn't know them personally. Likewise, you are young and baptized Christians whom I don't really know personally. In his letter, Paul felt obligated to prepare his fellow Christians in their walk as I feel obligated to help prepare you as my fellow Christians in your walk. Paul wanted to encourage these believers that have been presented with a new life, just like I want to encourage you who are going out into your new life. So this morning, I would like to bring out a few points from Colossians chapter 3 that Paul makes in his letter to help aid the believers in how to make their decisions in their new lives. So let's begin. Colossians chapter 3, 1 through 4. The first thing we're going to do is seek, find, and set. Next slide, please. So chapter 3, verses 1 through 4. Next slide, please. If then you have been raised with Christ, seek the things that are above where Christ is, seated at the right hand of God. Set your minds on things that are above, not on things that are on earth. For you have died, and your life is hidden with Christ in God. When Christ, who is your life, appears, then you, will all, you also will appear with him in glory. Paul tells the believers to seek the things that are above, which sounds pretty vague until we read what follows. Above is where Christ is, seated at God's right hand. This indicates that above is heaven. So put together, Paul says to choose to look for the things that lead you towards heaven. 
That is where Christ is at. So Christians are to seek after what leads us to our heavenly goal. Paul then tells them to set their minds on things above. Well, this indicates that you can find what you're looking for. You can find the things that are above, which Jesus himself said in Matthew chapter 7, uh, seek and ye shall find. But Paul says that you won't find the things above on this earth. Next slide, please. So put together, those who choose to seek after what's above will find it. And when you find it, concentrate on that. Set your mind to it on which you have found and make that your goal. When I got accepted into college in 2007, I did not have my mind set on the things above. And in fact, I wasn't even trying to seek those things. I was presented with the choice to. The decisions were there for me to make, but I chose not to make them. I didn't choose to serve God and therefore I chose to serve myself. I followed what was right according to me in my young eyes and how I saw the world. And I did not follow the well-known scripture from Proverbs 3. Trust in the Lord with all your heart and lean not on your own understanding. In all your ways acknowledge him and he will make your path straight. Be not wise in your own eyes. Fear the Lord and turn away from evil. It will be healing to your flesh and refreshment to your bones. What I did was I chose to lean on my own understanding, which I found out is very, very little. I found the pleasures I was looking for, and I set my mind to those. And my heart became bitter towards those who wanted me to make better and godly decisions. I chose to live on this earth in the earthly ways that are described in the next five verses. Next slide. I chose to live in sexual immorality, impurity, passion, evil desire, the desiring of what others want, which is covetousness, idolatry. I lived in anger and wrath. I had intentions to do evil. I slandered, and boy, I had an awful mouth. I had a bad mouth. And I lied to the very people who I was supposed to be walking in Christ with. That is the way I lived my life. I made those decisions, I made those choices, and that's what happened. The, re the result was uh, I now have a permanent stain on my record. In six months, I squandered an education because I made a choice that got me arrested. I made a choice to forget my Christian friends who were making the choices to go study and to live wholesome lives and stay out of trouble. And I surrounded myself with new friends that were found at parties that were just full of illegal activity. I chose to skip all my classes, which by the way, you still have to pay for those if you, even if you don't go to them. <laughs> yeah? Let's talk about college being the most expensive party in the world, you know? And these choices, this series of choices resulted in the school asking me to leave. I was pulled into the dean's office and he said, this is not the place for you. And I wasn't at a state school. I went to Oklahoma Christian. Now my fingers aren't going to work. I spent six months setting my mind on things of this earth instead of the things above. And not only did that create a mess for me that no one could clean up but myself. Mom and dad couldn't help me. Grandma and grandpa couldn't help me. This was on me. But it cost me some things. Making those choices cost me an education. They cost me a clean record. They cost me a place to live. Two cars, over $10,000, way over $10,000. It cost me my virginity and innocence in other ways. And furthermore, it cost me my friendships as well as the relationships with faithful Christians who just wanted what was best for me. And I don't say all this to drag you down or discourage you, but to show you using my mistakes, the very real effect that the devil can have on a young person who does not choose to set their minds on the things above. Next slide, please. God himself says in Genesis 4, sin is crouching at your door. Its desire is contrary to you, but you must rule over it. 
The devil is waiting for you to make decisions that present him with the opportunity to put sin into your life. The beauty is that you can rule over it. It says it right here. You can make the choices. You can make the decisions that make you the ruler over sin. Next slide, please. Be assured that you will find what you are looking for. I promise you, if you're looking for it, you will find it. I encourage you to make the choice to seek after what is righteous. I encourage you to find what is righteous and then for you to set your mind on those godly things. Concentrate on how to attain those things and live your new life pressing on toward the things above that lead you to heaven, which is the Christian's goal. Heaven is the Christian's goal. That's where we want to go. So now that we've briefly talked about making godly choices by seeking, finding, and setting ourselves towards what is righteous, I would like to briefly talk about the things that Paul instructs the new Christians to seek after and put on in their new life. So what to seek and put on uh, will be in Colossians chap uh, chapter 3 again, 12 through 15, if you'll read with me. Put on then as God's chosen ones, holy and beloved, compassionate hearts, kindness, humility, meekness, and patience, bearing with one another, and if one has a complaint against another, forgiving each other, as the Lord has forgiven you, so you also must forgive. And above all these, put on love, which binds everything together in perfect harmony, and let the peace of Christ rule in your hearts, to which indeed you were called in one body. And be thankful, uh, be thankful, let the word of Christ dwell in you richly, teaching and admonishing one another in all wisdom, singing psalms and hymns and spiritual songs with thankfulness in your hearts to God. And whatever you do in word or deed, do everything in the name of the Lord Jesus, giving thanks to God the Father through him. Well, at this point, the sermon will pretty much preach itself. Paul gives the new Christians the things from above to seek out and put on. And so these are the things that we all must choose to seek after and choose to put on as followers of Christ. And since I really want you to understand these things, we will be going through and defining these things very quickly so that we understand what it is that we are to be doing. I don't believe it's just enough for me to say, seek, find, and set your mind on what's righteous and then have you go figure it out. That's not what Paul does, so why would I do it? So let's begin. What to seek on, what to seek and put on. Compassionate hearts. Make the choice to have concern and sympathetic pity for the sufferings of others. God showed compassion on us by putting in place a plan so that we can go to heaven, that we don't have to go to hell. He didn't have to do that. God chose to do that for us. And likewise, we don't have to show compassion to others but we should, that's what Christians do. Next is kindness. Make the choice to be friendly, generous, and considerate. This means being friendly even to those that we don't wanna be friendly to. To interact with kindness even to those who may not deserve it has tremendous power to soften the heart. Make the choice to, be, to live in humility be modest about your importance. I remember when I was young, the world revolved around me. It doesn't. I had to find that out. But we are all of equal importance to God. Okay? And so we need to act like that. Let's not put our, let's not put our minds on how society focuses on us. Let's see how God focuses on us and treats us. And that's all the importance we need to know. Next, meekness. Make the choice to be quiet and gentle and submissive, not in the way that people can take advantage of you, but in servitude to others. Remember that the meek shall inherit the earth. Patience. That's a hard one, especially for me. Make the choice to accept delays, troubles, and suffering without getting upset or angry. This encompasses bearing with one another, 
Not everyone is going to get along all the time. So we have to choose to be patient with each other and choose to be patient with the things that happen to us. Forgiving, have a forgiving nature. Make the choice to let go the wrongs that are done to you by others. Not just because it's the right thing to do, not just because the Bible says it, but because we are forgiven by God for the wrongs that we do. That's, that's a big one. Don't forgive a person because you like them. Forgive them because you have been forgiven. Next slide, please. Love. Make the choice to over everything else. Have constant affection for each other. It's love that pulls everything together to form a pleasing and consistent whole. We were created out of love. So it only makes sense to choose to show love to others. Peace. This isn't just the freedom from disturbance. This is a specific type of peace that comes when you choose to live the way Christ Jesus tells us to live. This is the type of peace that allows one to say, the Lord will provide, instead of saying, I am a victim. This is the peace that comes when we make the choice to be unified in Christ as a body as well. Thankfulness. Make the choice to express gratitude for everything in your life. Not just to your fellow man, but to God. He provides for your every need. The needs of this life are really basic. Food, water, shelter. It's basically what we need to survive. And I believe we have a distorted view of what we need to survive or, or have a comfortable life. The Lord has truly blessed us, this country, beyond any other country in time has been the way that they have been blessed. And so we need to humble ourselves and be thankful every day. I don't deserve this. God has blessed me with this. That's the frame of mind. Don't just be thankful that you woke up, but be thankful for everything that follows every morning that we do wake up. Choose to give the Lord your gratitude daily. Read your Bible. Let the words of Christ dwell in you richly. Read your Bible. We have the words of Jesus, our Savior, at our disposal. You can go get them for free most of the time in any, any translation you want. So let's be familiar with them. Make the choice to know your Bible, to know the teachings of Christ. Be so familiar that they live inside of you. Be so familiar with them that they guide your thoughts and actions. The words of Jesus make us different from normal people of this earth. Society sets the normal standard. We're called to be different. When there seems to be no way, Christ's words will bring you to a proper decision. I promise you, Christ's words will change the way that you see the world. They will change the way you act and the way that you react to the world. So make the choice to let Christ's words dwell in you richly. Teach. Make the choice to not keep Jesus' words to yourself. Jesus' words have the power to change lives we just talked about. Jesus' words have the power to save souls. No other words spoken on this earth have the impact on individuals and societies the way that Jesus' words have. I don't understand how people can claim to be Christians and yet never show the intricacies of, of the Bible to their fellow man. It just doesn't compute with me. Don't be selfish with the word and keep it to yourself. Make the choice to teach your friends, the children you will have, the family that you will have, and yes, even the strangers that you will meet. The words of life that have the power to save are Jesus' words. Have a singing heart and mouth. Make the choice to praise God the way that he wants us to praise him. And that is through song. I don't understand why so many Christians sing all the music on the radio at the top of their lungs, which is most often littered with obscenities and hidden sexual messages, but they don't open their mouths to worship the God that has the power to keep them from hell. 
That just logically does not make sense to me. Understand that singing is not about you. And if you're thinking it's about you, you have a conviction problem. It's about God. Make the choice to sing and sing out. Sing not just because you are commanded to, but because you want to, because you are thankful. Sing because you want to praise the God that saved you and has the power to save others. Sing because you are one who was lost and is now found. Make the choice to sing. And finally, our last slide. Work for God in word and deed. Make the choice to do everything in the name of Jesus. I remember having some of my first jobs. I'm working for the man. Oh, it's awful. Oh, here I am flipping burgers. You know, this isn't a job anybody wants to do. Well, you know what? Don't do it for the man. Don't even do it for yourself. Do it for Jesus. Choose for Jesus to be the reason that you are producing the best quality that you can. Not just monetary benefits that come from it. When you're talking to someone as well, in everything you do, word or deed. So when you're talking to someone as well, speak as though Jesus is there, because he really is. I truly believe that. And choose to use your speech to build up, encourage, unify, and above all else, love. Choose to live for Jesus. Uh, final slide, I guess. So in conclusion, this morning we have done a brief study on Colossians chapter 3, part of a letter that was written to new Christians who were in need of instruction for their new lives. Like Paul, even though I don't know you very well, I do know who you belong to. And I want to encourage you to make the decisions required to live a life, a fruitful life, in Christ. Trust me when I tell you again, you will find the things that you seek after. You will. Sometimes things will find you, and you have to make that decision as well. So I encourage you to make the choice to seek after the things that are above. Lean on your Christian family and your Christian friends. Follow what they're doing. It may not seem to be as fun, but it will cost you so much less. It will cost you so much less, I promise. And I'd like to end at least by saying we are all very proud of you. And I think I can correctly speak for all of us when I say we are excited to see you grow into the future church. So at this time, that's the conclusion of my lesson. We'd like to extend an invitation to anyone who's in need, whatever it may be. Many of us here have made the choice to be here so that we can pray with you, teach you, help you come to forgive be a support for you in confession, to baptize you in Jesus' name, but above all, we've made the decision to love you. All these things and more we choose to do for each other when you're a member of the Lord's Church. So if you have any need, please come forward as we stand and as we sing.